This is Katja Greeny College. Uh, thanks very much for joining us uh, for this uh, this evening presentation on power system decarbonization pathways in China. Uh, obviously, uh, very pleased to introduce our visiting uh, speaker this evening, Professor Chong King Hang, uh, and he's the dean of the Department of Electrical Engineering and and also the president of uh, Energy uh, Internet Innovation Research Institute in Tsinghua University. Uh, and uh, also he's visiting professor at Imperial College, and he was uh, uh, strongly leading this uh, this uh, uh, development of the Tsinghua University Imperial College Research Center uh, for smart power energy systems. And this we've got a uh, you know big uh, um, workshops today and tomorrow on on this one. So uh, uh, also just to quickly mention that. Uh, He's also fellow of IET, IEEE, and also Chinese Society of Electrical Engineering, and also life fellow of Claire Hall, University of Cambridge. As I mentioned, a visiting professor at Imperial, uh, and also also he's also a junk professor in, in uh, 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 University of South Korea, uh, and uh, also he has been uh, very strongly he's still very strongly involved in strategic advisory group. Of Sigre, uh, looking into uh, you know both in China but also uh, at the global perspective, uh, and also uh, he's also uh, fellows of the nomination resources of committee members of IEEE uh, PES Power Energy Systems, and also just to just to highlight, he has got uh, uh, in 2018 award of outstanding contribution to China. Uh, uh, electric power science and technology, and 2021 is got IEEE phase from Roy Billington. And uh, what I probably should have mentioned earlier is that uh, he has got about 400 publications. Uh, more than 120 of these are in IEEE transaction journals. Uh, and uh, you know he has been uh, uh, the the kind of the citation is more than 32,000. Citations with the H index 90. So, uh, uh, you know, uh, very pleased that he's coming, you know, over to you and very much look forward to, 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 to listening to your presentation regarding China's decarbonization pathways. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Professor Gordon Strobok, for the kind introduction. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, it is my great pleasure and honor to be invited here to talk about the uh, energy transition pathways in China. Uh, as Goran, uh, my colleague, uh, my friends uh, mentioned just now, uh, the, uh, we are talking about the energy transition towards the uh, net zero targets to meet uh, the challenging of the climate change. So everywhere we're talking about this issue. So today uh, I would introduce some uh, ideas and the, uh, the, the research areas in China. So I hope this could be a, a good reference to all of you in this room. Uh, first, I would like to again uh, to appreciate uh, my friends, uh, Professor uh, Gordon Strabok and Professor Tim Green and Dr. Uh, Teng Fei and Dr. Gu Yunjie and other uh, colleagues. Uh, thank you all for the, ho the hospitalities. And uh, it's uh, because we have been leading a big delegation from Tsinghua. Uh, we have 11 uh, delegates in this visit, so it's good to talk to uh, our EPA college uh, uh, colleagues. So my topic is uh, about power system transition and decarbonization uh, pathways in China. Oh, oh thank you. Okay, uh, first I would like to briefly introduce the collaborations between EPA College and Tsinghua, and then I will go uh, 
uh, back to the uh, main topic to the decarbonization of the power system in China. The collaborations between the uh, Ipe College and Tsinghua. Uh, Tsinghua University was established in 1911. Uh, uh, it's, uh, it, it's ranked the top two universities in, in China. <laughs> you, I think most of our Chinese friends know that story. Uh, we have uh, uh, nearly 60 departments in the uh, university. Uh, it covers almost all the aspects of the research areas. And uh, Tsinghua campus is, was the formal imperial garden. So it's a very beautiful uh, campus. So I, I think uh, some of you might have been to there. Uh, I hope uh, in the future we can welcome uh, some of you in the, uh, uh, to visit Tsinghua. And uh, uh, my department is Department of Electrical Engineering. Uh, this department was established in uh, 1932. Uh, uh, it, it, it was the, among the first three engineering departments uh, which has been uh, set up in Tsinghua University. So uh, uh, our, uh, right now we have uh, roughly uh, 1,000 students uh, in the campus and we have 103 uh, faculty members. Uh, and among those faculty members, we have 13 uh, IEEE fellows and uh, uh, third, 30 uh, IET fellows. Uh, this is my group. Uh, our, our colleagues, uh, 103 colleagues was uh, divided into 11 uh, research groups. This is my group. We have seven uh, <laughs> colleagues and uh, here we have Hai Wang, uh, Ar Shun and Hongye uh, are present in this room. And uh, uh, Gordon just mentioned the Joint Research Center for the Intelligent uh, Energy System. Uh, this uh, research uh, institute, institute was initiated in uh, 2019, and uh, our vice president, Professor Xue Qi Kun, came here uh, and signed the MOU with uh, Professor Nigel uh, Brandon. Uh, and then we started the first term to col collaborate. Uh, uh, we renewed that uh, uh, agreement uh, two years ago in 2022. Uh, actually, the, uh, during the last uh, four, over th uh, four years of collaboration, we have been very pr productive. Uh, we uh, produced uh, uh, about 20 uh, papers including uh, uh, 14 uh, IEEE translations papers. And uh, more than that, uh, we have been doing uh, two different uh, joint projects. One is leading by Professor Richard Green uh, in the UK side, and I'm leading the uh, Chinese side. And one is leading by Professor Tim Green and Gore Strabuck uh, uh, as well. So the, that two projects was supported by uh, National Science Foundation in China and EPSRC uh, in, uh, in the UK. And uh, uh, of course, we, uh, during the uh, last four ye years, uh, Professor Tim Green and Professor Gordon Strobok was appointed to uh, be the uh, dis distinguished visiting professor in Tsinghua University, and myself was appointed the visiting professor in Imperial College. And we have been uh, keeping frequent uh, joint visits even during the uh, pandemic. So we have an uh, exchange of the six uh, faculty members and over 10 uh, students uh, long, uh, for the long term stay in different, in the, uh, the, the different campus. And uh, during the pandemic, uh, we ha have been, uh, I think, the uh, pandemic did not prevent us from the close collaboration. We uh, did monthly meeting of uh, remote meetings. Uh, so that is very helpful to uh, understand each other so we can keep uh, very productive in the last four years. And uh, we, 
think the joint research center is very good to have international uh, impact. So we, in the last several years, we did three, at least three uh, special issues in some prestigious uh, journals. For example, uh, I was invited to be the guest, in, uh, guest editing chief for proceedings of the IEEE and uh, Professor Tim Green as well as he has contributed a very good paper to that special issue. And then uh, we, are, we have been working on another uh, special issue for IEEE uh, Power and uh, uh, Energy magazine. Uh, it will be published by the end of this year. I, I, I'm uh, still uh, editor-in-chief uh, for this uh, special issue. And we have been uh, working uh, on another uh, special issue for applied energy. Uh, the topic is uh, virtual power plant, which is a very top, hot topic. And uh, during the today's workshop uh, pr previously, we have s at least three talk talks related to VPP. Okay, uh, let's come back to the topic of the today. Uh, first, I would like to uh, say a few words about the uh, targets of the net zero in China and uh, the challenges which has been existing in China. Uh, we, we know in, uh, in recent years, uh, uh, most, uh, uh, the, most countries have uh, launched their net zero targets. Uh, uh, Eighty percent of the uh, countries uh, set uh, 2050 as the net zero targets year, uh, while others set up different targets years. Uh, since the energy transition or energy system will play a important role in the climate change issues, so uh, the decarbonization, decarbonization of the energy system is the key to meet the net zero target. Uh, not only the countries, but also other organizations. For example, we are very familiar with IEEE. Uh, previously, we think that uh, energy transition is only related to uh, uh, some societies. For example, uh, IEEE Power and Energy Society, uh, Power uh, IEEE Pairs, or some other societies. But right now, IEEE started to think to do some uh, systematic thinking. Uh, let's uh, think that uh, through IEEE, uh, the interdisciplinary uh, research is a, a very uh, good advantage for IEEE. So uh, IEEE can uh, ask all the societies to work together. So in, 20, uh, the, in the beginning of 2022, uh, IEEE uh, set up the uh, IEEE ad hoc committee to coordinate IEEE's response to climate change, which is called CCIRCC. And uh, uh, at the very beginning, the Professor Safa Rama, who is a professor at Virginia Tech, and uh, uh, at that time he was the president-elect of IEEE. Uh, uh, he set up this uh, committee and chaired this committee for one year. And last year, he became the president of IEEE. So the, uh, well, you, you might know Professor Tariq uh, Dorani, who is the professor, research professor in the University of Strathclyde, took over uh, the chair position, and he chaired the, this uh, committee for one year. I, I'm the only member from China, because in this committee there are uh, uh, less than 20 members from uh, the world. Uh, I'm the only one from China. So uh, we have been working together to concentrate to the uh, IEEE's response to climate change. And in China, the government, uh, in, the 2020, in 2020, the government, the government uh, announced that China is going to uh, peak its CO2 emission before 2030 and to achieve carbon neutrality by uh, or before 2060. That is Chinese targets. Of course, we can see a, 
very strong power demand growth in China in re recent years and uh, in the future. Uh, the answer uh, lies in two aspects. One is that the per capita electricity usage is still uh, much lower than developed countries. The second one is that in 2020, the electrification ratio in China is only 27%. Uh, according to the uh, estimation, by 2060, the electrification ratio will, uh, uh, will be 70%. So in this way, there will be a very rapid growth in power demand. Uh, our uh, estimated, uh, estimation shows that by 2060, uh, the electricity uh, demand will be doubled compared to 2020. Uh, you might know that in China, uh, the first dam was powered on in 1882 in Shanghai, which was uh, over 140 years ago. So if we set uh, 2020 as the baseline. Uh, for, the, uh, for the existing system, we have been working on that for uh, 138 years. But from 2020 to 2060, we have 40 years to go. We will build uh, another existing, uh, another power system. Uh, the scale is the same as the existing one. So that is a huge challenge. We have only uh, uh, one third of the time, but we have uh, so many work to do. Uh, of course, renewable energy is the solution to, to decarbonization of the power system. Uh, here we show uh, two pictures. Uh, uh, if we think about the uh, wind and PV, uh, 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 the capacity, installed capacity. Uh, we compared uh, uh, Europe, uh, US, and uh, China. You can see uh, by 2070 or by 2018, uh, China has become the uh, top one in the world. And the, uh, the, the, the uh, installed capacity is much higher than the second one. So, uh, that means that Chinese government have been put much efforts in the development of the renewables. And the, the statistics is uh, up to uh, 2022. Uh, to two, uh, three days ago, the Chinese government uh, uh, released a short report in terms of the renew, uh, installed capacity of re the renewables by the end of 2023, last year. Uh, but we still need time to think about the details. Uh, maybe in, in the, the detailed report will come out in, in uh, the end of uh, February. So 2022 would be the uh, basis of uh, our research. Uh, you can see we uh, have a total power capacity of 2.5 uh, billion kilowatts, uh, in which uh, uh, PV and the wind is about 30%. Uh, so it's a huge number. And uh, the uh, renew renewable energy, the total capacity of renewable en uh, energy is about 0.76, uh, uh, about 76. Uh, billion kilowatt uh, that's that is one third of the uh, world uh, and uh, even during the pandemic the three years of pandemics that the Chinese uh, power system has been uh, installed installing 100 gigawatts each year that is of course is a huge number uh, so uh, According to the report uh, three, uh, three days ago, uh, that's uh, from 2022 to 2023, the annual increase is another uh, great number. Uh, wind, uh, the increase of wind is six, 76 gigawatts. The increase rate is 
over 20 percent. And the so, uh, PV is, this is a, a huge one. The, the uh, incremental capacity is, in last year is over 200 gigawatts. That's the in increasing uh, rate uh, is uh, over 50 percent. Uh, of, of course, that is because uh, last year is the first year after the pandemic, so uh, all the installations can be uh, increased. Uh, in this way, that we have been meeting great challenges of the power system decarbonization. Uh, in China, we use the uh, uh, item, uh, a new type power system, which is uh, we compared to the previous, the existing power system, we think that the um, main feature of this system is the uh, renewable energy dominated power system, which is called a new type power system. Uh, if we think about the uh, detailed uh, features, we can list uh, quite a lot of items, but at least two features should be considered. One, is that the difficulties of the supply demand balance due to the uncertainties uh, that comes from the uh, large scale renewables. And the second one is the new security and stability features marked by the grid integration of the inverter based resources. So these are the common interest in the world. Every country is talking about those features. So in China, we uh, think that uh, for this huge power system, we should think about the two features. Okay, meeting these uh, challenges, what is, could be the solutions? Uh, so we have this picture. In the left uh, side, uh, we, we, we will list some of the challenges. We divide the challenges in different time scales, for example, for the planning stage, for the operation stage, and for the transit stage. And uh, in the uh, right uh, side, uh, we think about the potential solutions or potential techniques. Uh, of course, each technique have different costs, so we think that the, the, the cost, even the cost are different. Uh, we, of course, we should uh, adopt the uh, techniques that at a, a lower cost first. So if the uh, penetration uh, of the renewables is still low, we will uh, try to uh, adopt some of the uh, techniques with low cost. But if the penetration ratio is very high, the high cost techniques have been put into application as well. So in, in this way, uh, this picture will work for the next 40 years. And uh, this picture also shows the potential uh, solutions to, uh, to, the, to meet the, 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 the different uh, uh, challenges. The left side is the as a potential solutions. Each solution will contribute to not only one uh, uh, aspect. So usually, for example, if you think about the demand response, it will contribute to the peak regulation, but, but also to the, uh, uh, the, the, uh, the transition, uh, transmission uh, congestion management. So uh, there are, uh, this is a multiple to multiple uh, basis. Uh, uh, we, in China, uh, we have uh, so many deep uh, provinces. So each province can think about which technique are suitable for their province and which uh, uh, results could be lead to by this technique. Uh, the, the solution is, of course, this is a high-level solution because in this research we are considering the whole national system, which is a huge one. 
so we set up a unique uh, technique, which is called generation grid load storage coordinate, coordinated uh, planning model. Uh, this, of course, is uh, the idea is not uh, that uh, advanced, but the scale of the problem is the uh, yeah, most challenging. So to to solve this uh, pro problem, we developed a, a software called GOPT, uh, Grid Optimal Optimal Planning Tool, to solve this national uh, level uh, pro problem. Uh, this uh, this uh, uh, platform uh, considers multiple security and policy constraints to uh, because it, it looks at the problem in the uh, national level. So uh, we have to uh, simply sum of the constraints. Uh, I was told that uh, some of the audits are outside triple E departments. So I will skip the details of the model. But I will, uh, I think the usually we, uh, because the uh, the, the, the overall cost is the planning cost and uh, the investment cost and the operation cost. So uh, it is easy to understand that we uh, include the generation constraints and the network constraints and so on. Uh, and since the integration of the renewables uh, uh, bring great challenge uh, of the uncertainties and the uh, low inertia problems, so we have to consider the minimum inertia constraints, which uh, according to our research, it can be simplified into a, a multiple uh, linear uh, constraints, equations, uh, in equations, and also focusing uh, constraints. Uh, since the power system is so huge, it produces so many data, uh, we are using the data-driven uh, constraints to model the future uh, power system. Uh, here, I, I think I can take only one technique to introduce. Uh, this technique is called hourly operation simulation. Uh, previously, in the traditional uh, power system, we use production simulation uh, in the power system which can produce the operational cost to the investment, investment uh, 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 model so we can get an uh, overall cost of the system. Uh, here we use hourly operation or a daily operation with a 24-hour operation. This is uh, extremely uh, important when the penetration level of renewable is, is high. Why uh, we use this uh, 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 technique? Uh, we can look at this picture. Uh, if we think about the uh, future operation of the power system at uh, uh, hourly base, it will produce a huge uh, dimension of, of data. So each uh, generator he operate at uh, different points will produce uh, different uh, data. Uh, so we will uh, have uh, vectors with very high dimension. This uh, uh, high dimension vector work together uh, will produce the operation simulation results. And to uh, get a uh, uh, results which can be understood very conveniently. So we have to uh, do data uh, pre-processing and then clustering the, the data and to uh, do the dimension uh, reduction and then to get the visual uh, results. That is the basic idea of the, 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 this approach. Uh, here we choose one pro province, Qinghai province, as a uh, Example: Qinghai is located in the west of uh, northwest of, of China. Uh, the 
penetration rate is quite high. It's uh, uh, so it, before 2020, uh, the the penetration uh, rate is uh, is already very high. So we uh, we started from 2017. At that time, the Qinghai province has less uh, renewable energy. So we use this technique to to the Qinghai power system. We can see that we can see that uh, from the uh, if we, with that uh, high uh, dimensional vector, we uh, get the cost and the uh, 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 dimensional reduction results to a, uh, we project this result to a two dimensional uh, uh, space. Uh, the result is like that. Uh, that means uh, in, uh, if the uh, penetration of renewables is uh, very uh, low, the uh, operation state uh, is that is not a, a net diversity. Uh, that means we have we can have four or five uh, steady state uh, operation pattern to describe the existing power system. But if we increase the uh, penetration rates uh, from uh, the uh, the numbers in 2017 to uh, 33%, the situation changed. You can see that the the to, uh, the to, uh, top uh, the central top one, uh, the status in the space uh, has a di diverse di distribution. And the status uh, during the different seasons changed. Within uh, the same season, the status changed. That is quite different from the uh, previous existing uh, power system. Uh, so we think 33% of penetration is the critical value of the Qinghai system. Of course, the different uh, power system has the different critical value, but if we use this technique to identify the critical value that will work for the future uh, development of the, uh, the power, system, power system in different provinces, that will, will give us a very good reference to this, to the study of the uh, power system how system in the uh, in the other in our other provinces. Uh, here we compared the existing uh, technique uh, with our proposed technique. Previously in China, uh, typically we use only four operation modes as a, a extreme uh, scenario. So a winter peak load, winter mi minimum load and summer peak load and summer minimum load. It's quite uh, 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 easy to understand because if you use, uh, use these uh, uh, four scenarios, extreme, extreme scenarios, if that's uh, in these uh, uh, four scenarios, your system worked uh, very well, then you can make sure that other uh, uh, operation status will be stable. But if we change the, to the uh, power system with very high penetration of renewables, we cannot do that because we think that uh, most risky period usually is not in the peak uh, period. So the hourly based on, uh, based on the hour, hourly uh, operation simulation, we can find which period is most risky. And then we can give the signal to the uh, control centers uh, for their uh, short-term schedule of the pulses. And also, uh, as Professor Goran Strabaka talked just a few, a few minutes ago, we are meeting some, uh, we are still meeting some problems uh, uh, with, uh, in maybe several weeks, we do not have enough wind or sunlight. So that means the wind uh, output of wind at PV are very small. In this case, we, because we are doing a, a hourly based uh, simulation, that it will be very convenient to find. 
the risky uh, periods of the system. So uh, because the, the power system is strongly connected uh, to each provinces, so we can uh, try to find the solutions which uh, transmission line should be uh, strengthened. Uh, we, uh, I have been leading a, a secret working group in uh, 2016 to 2019. And uh, then by the end of the 2019, we published the uh, technical brochure, uh, optimal power system planning under growing uncertainties. We integrated uh, uh, the experience from uh, 17 uh, countries uh, from uh, 28 uh, uh, members. And Unreal gave this uh, com uh, comparison. Uh, GOPD uh, is uh, the technique we introduced just now. And the other uh, techniques used by IEA, uh, Denmark, and, uh, and so on. Uh, we, uh, Enria, uh, the reports from Enria said that the, this kind of hourly based simulation is very uh, helpful to the uh, re renew, uh, renewable dominated power system. Okay, well, I will briefly introduce the results and the pathways. Uh, the capac capacity mix in 40 years. Uh, this is 2020, uh, 2022, all these are uh, existing power system. And 2030 is the peak, uh, 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 CO2 peak, peak year, and, uh, and 2060 is the net zero. Uh, you can see the uh, directions uh, for wind, uh, the, the the numbers, the share of the wind increased very uh, rapidly, and uh, so does PV. And we, uh, in China, the hydro power station has been uh, developed, almost de developed. So we do not have extra hydro to develop. So uh, a nuclear, we think by the end of 2060, we have we can have. 5% of nuclear capacity. Uh, coal and gas. In China, we do not have that much gas. So coal is the, uh, so far we think Chinese power system is the coal dominated power system. But uh, by 2060, we're going to have 400 gigawatts uh, coal and 400 gigawatts gas with CCS. Uh, this capacity is, is dual. Uh, during the, uh, the, the, the pathway, you can see there is a phasing out of coal um, after uh, 2030. Uh, we we'll still keep the, that uh, capacity for coal uh, with CCS because we need uh, the uh, flexible operation of the power system, especially for the uh, requirements for the inertia. And this is the energy mix, it's the same as the previous table. And for the demand side, uh, of course, the load grows very rapidly. And in China, I think the same in the U uh, UK, the top 95% uh, sharp peak load uh, to 100%. Uh, uh, the duration is quite small. You know, uh, it's uh, less than 50 hours. So that's, hours are quite expensive. So we have to think about to decrease the, that uh, sh uh, sharp peak load. Uh, uh, in our model, uh, we have been, uh, we, we think that 25% uh, of the uh, peak load will be flexible. That means we uh, are looking at the uh, solutions to the demand side uh, to make the flexible um, operation of the uh, power system uh, in demand side. For example, electric vehicle. 
it has a uh, has been play an important role in ch uh, Chinese power system. Uh, in the future, electric vehicle will uh, because the electrification of the transportation system, electric uh, EV will become a major technique for the uh, transportation system. So uh, myself, uh, I have been driving a uh, EV for four years. So it's it's good to have these demand side uh, uh, techniques to give us uh, to associate with the uh, high penetration of renewables. And the generation uh, distribution is quite different from the UK system. Uh, in China, uh, the large scale onshore wind power are mainly located in the northwest, north, uh, and northeast. And the offshore wind power is mainly located in the coast areas, which are also node centers. So, so it's good to have these offshore uh, wind farms uh, to uh, serve as the majority of the uh, demand in the load centers. And we have PV. PV is everywhere in China. Uh, but we think that PV, uh, the, 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 with the high load factors, the PV should be installed in the uh, provinces with high uh, altitude. And one thing I would like to mention is that uh, concentrating uh, solar power. This is a very good solution to the future Chinese power system. Uh, we we uh, uh, concentrated solar power is called CSP. Uh, CSP is uh, because uh, uh, there is four there are four parts in CSP. Uh, the, the most important one is that thermal energy storage. With this storage of heat, the uh, uh, output uh, period can be moved from the day to the night. Uh, and if you have enough capacity of the uh, thermal storage, uh, the, 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 the output of the CSP uh, in the night could be uh, larger than the day. So CSP is very convenient to, uh, to, to uh, show its uh, flexibility and to the, uh, re to the requirement of the uh, uh, supply and uh, demand balance. And more, moreover, we can see that CSP can produce the inertia support to the power system because the, the, the last part of the CSP is almost the same as the coal-fired power plant. So that makes sense to the future power system. And uh, we have been uh, integrating the CSP in so-called desert energy base. In China last year, uh, oh, sorry, it's 2022, uh, it has been announced that we are going to build uh, eight desert uh, energy bases. Uh, in this, uh, the, the, each base will be a very large one. Uh, usually we have 400 gigawatts uh, wind, 400 gigawatts uh, PV, and a uh, number, a uh, reasonable number of the CSP and other uh, capacities. So we, because this uh, uh, desert air, uh, energy base is located in remote areas. So we have to uh, build the high uh, HVDC uh, to move the electricity generated from that base to the load centers. Uh, and by 2030, uh, we uh, according to the uh, estimation, uh, the installed capacity could be uh, in each uh, in different uh, uh, the energy base is uh, f at least 500 gigawatts could be uh, built. And, uh, and then after the peak year, we uh, can continue to the, uh, the, the, the building of this uh, desert uh, energy base. And transmission side, in China, you might know that 
uh, we have uh, ultra high voltage uh, AC or DC system, uh, especially for the HV DC. Uh, UHV DC will, will play an important role in the future uh, power system to transmit the uh, energy from the remote area to uh, our load centers. Uh, and we, ha we will have uh, 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 carbon emission uh, trajectory uh, like this, like this. So you can see that uh, by 2030, uh, it, uh, the CO2 emission will be peak. And then we will have a very uh, fast decrease in CO2 emission. And by 2060, uh, we can achieve a net zero target. And to achieve this, uh, uh, a decarbonization uh, pathway, uh, we have been thinking different techniques. For example, uh, we uh, use this carbon emission flow as, uh, uh, as a, a technique to uh, account the responsibility uh, of different areas uh, uh, associated with the power flow. The uh, carbon emission flow can be uh, calculated. Then for different, uh, for example, for the sending end and for the receiving end, and we have different uh, responsibilities to uh, uh, associate with the CO2 emission. And we have uh, been developing the so-called carbon meter for the, power si for the Chinese power system. Then with that, carbon meter, we can um, uh, meet uh, the products uh, produced by uh, electric fired uh, machines. Of course, cost is an issue. We are aiming at decarbonization, uh, decarbonization of the power system, but we have to think about the cost. According to our research, the Chinese, the whole Chinese power system will uh, see a increase of the cost by almost 20 percent. That is a huge, again, a huge uh, money. So we, uh, where will the money come from? It should be uh, look, look into the details of the, the structures. So, we list a few of them. Okay, here is the conclusion. Uh, the carbon neutrality target is there, so the Chinese power system need to be uh, transformed from the existing one to the future new type power system. We think that we should, from the uh, demand side, we should increase the uh, electrification ratio, and from the uh, generation side, the uh, installed capacity of the renewables will be very high uh, after the 40 years we can meet the net zero target. And the CO2 emission uh, trajectory uh, is the, in different pathways, we uh, can have different tra trajectory, but the peak year is the key. And after the peak year, we can see a uh, phasing out of the core. So the pathway is very, uh, for the first 20 years, it's, uh, it's very sharp. At, at the last uh, 10 years, will be, it will be flat. And the cost is the issue. So we uh, has made uh, policy recommendations to the government so the government can consider the cost in advance. Okay, that's this uh, brief introduction to the uh, power system decarbonization pathways in China. I hope that these uh, techniques and the, the result can uh, serve as a reference to the UK system. Thank you.